I am so many things. So if you would ask me, hey, what do you do? I was like, how much time do you have? I am trained in the Indian education system. मुझे यही सिखाया गया रटना. They are just doing it because दूर से अच्छा लगता है. अरे hundred million dollars raise हो गए. अरे देखो बंगला गाड़ी खरीद लिया. अरे देखो fortune forty under forty में आ गए. वो सब हो गया. जब हमने गाड़ी dot com launch किया हमें लगा cracker of a domain है. Correct. गाड़ी dot com. Correct. पर जैसे ही हम किसी डीलर के पास जाते थे बोलते अरे गड्डी डॉट कॉम स्कूल में अगर किसी से पूछोगे अंकुर बारी को जानते हो हाँ जानते हैं क्या जानते हैं उसके बारे में उसको नासा जाना था वो जो लोग पूछते हैं ना सर वन टर्निंग पॉइंट बता दीजिए टर्निंग पॉइंट कोई टर्निंग पॉइंट नहीं होता लाइफ में अंकुर वेलकम टू द बाबा शॉप एंड लाइक आई वॉज टेलिंग यू राइट नाउ I think the objective of the barber shop is to make entrepreneurship real and human. Um personally I'm very very bullish about the country and about our youths and not only just young people but even older people who have been in ha- who have had careers but now want to be founders of their own in their own field. I think the country is just we've got stable borders, we've got a government that's extremely functional, a demographic that is aspiring um you know and this there is everyone i talk to there is this sense that it is now our time and the f- whole point of ha- talking to you know people like you is to make the entrepreneurial journey very human you know like just talking about everything that comes along with it and of course to go deeper into uh, into it so welcome and thank you so much for taking the time thank you so much man i love the spirit behind it and it's such a pleasure to be here thank you so much for having me awesome so um In fact, when uh, one of the things about you <clears throat> that I find extremely refreshing, uh, of course, you know you are a very public person. You you are giving advice to millions of people who are now listening to you every day. Uh, but there is a genuine intent to help, uh, and it first like we don't we don't know each other. We have not worked together. We've uh, you know not we are we are meeting for the first time <clears throat> for this. Um, <clears throat> but when I invited you. not only did you immediately say yes but you went and saw i think the first episode and you came back with extremely detailed feedback on how we could do this better of course we are doing it for the first time but the intent to help was very obvious and not really something that you had to do but you did it so is that just becoming a part of who you are now or is it something which you it's it's a part of who you were all always yeah it, it's it's fascinating you zero down on help as the first thing of conversation because that i'd like to believe shantanu is all that i stand for i have gained so much through the benevolent help and nature of so many other people who have frankly no business to help me had no understanding of how that help could come back to them at any point of time in life but they did it because that's who they are and i have grown up seen my parents help people who frankly would perhaps never come back with any sort of hey is there a gain back from this despite our hard circumstances and help is something which has centered me a lot it is genuinely what i believe drives our civilization forward uh I recall and this is the cornerstone of what <clears throat> sapiens the book has been about which is 70 75000 years back almost every species were equal chimpanzees humans other mammals they were pretty much at par and suddenly 75000 years later humans are the most dominant species and there is an argument of why did that happen and the center point of that is because we have the ability to organize ourselves even with strangers which is very uncanny in any other species they don't usually do that and i find that fascinating and i think that that is going to be the reason why we will continue to be hopefully a dominant species and just help everybody including our own selves so i love that idea but do you does it give you a high when people you have touched in a positive way go on to become successful No frankly I don't even track I uh, and, and and that is the beauty of it for me help is something which is very natural to me it's not something that I pay attention to as in oh I helped you I helped you I helped you and keep account on that to ye koi deewar nahi hai jahan maine ekdam khuraj ke is insaan ko maine kiya tha I I love it when people come back but I would not hold it against anybody if they don't even with an update or even with any sort of help that comes back um and I don't feel I don't think I feel great about 
myself, but I feel great about the fact that I am in a position to help and that I always consider as a blessing and as a point of privilege. Amazing. Ta- tell me about you, 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 you kind of glanced about hard circumstances growing up, but tell me about what life was as a child and, and, and where you come from. It's a, it, it was a very happy childhood. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I really liked my childhood. We are a family of four, uh, mom, dad, my younger sister, who's six years younger to me and myself. We grew up in Lajpatnagar, which is a South colony in, we were Delhi. in Delhi. We were always in Delhi. Okay. So mom and dad moved out. We're originally from Kashmir, yeah. but we never, I, at least I never stayed in Kashmir. Mom and dad both are from Srinagar. They grew up their entire life there. Mom came much earlier to Delhi. She went to LSR and then she continued to stay here in Delhi. Uh, but she, she always wanted to marry someone which would take her back to Kashmir. Okay. <laughs> uh, and that's why she married my, my dad, at least according to her. And uh, once they got married, my dad was like, oh, let's leave Kashmir and go out. <laughs> so she's like, sorry, what the F? <laughs> and uh, they got married in 79. I was born in 1980. I was born in Amritsar. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Because my dad who had a traveling job. He, he was a sales professional all his life. So he was posted in Amritsar at that point of time. So I, we were there. And we had a brief stint in Lucknow, after which when I was three years old in 83, we moved to Delhi. Okay. And we stayed in Lajpatnagar all through. Somehow that became a settlement. Okay. And we moved houses. We always stayed in a rented accommodation, but Lajpatnagar was always there. My mom was a school teacher and my dad was, as I said, a sales professional. Uh, and he, to his credit, took very risky decisions in his career, which okay. unfortunately did not pan out for him. Okay. But I love him for the audacity that he showed. So he joined this really big, well, at that point, very small pharma company, which was like a startup-ish. Okay. And within a year, this is a story that he tells us, he got an offer, which is the equivalent of the tech offer nowadays, <laughs> okay. like double salary, a <laughs> gadi, and uh, he was like... Sure, let's let's just do it. Uh-huh. So he joined the other company. Okay. But that other company shut down. Okay. And the company that he had left went on to become Ranbaxi. Oh, really? And uh, and of course, no. He he unfortunately never recovered from that because then it was just one odd job to another odd job to another odd job. And we we lived our life in almost always perpetual financial debt. Never had enough money. My mom was terrific with somehow saving mommy. I, I think moms just have this yeah. thing of kahin dal ke kanastar mein, kahin kisi bartan mein, log hazaaron lakhon paise padhe honge. Like, kahan se aaye? Nahi, mein saalho se ikhatta kar rahi thi. Woh sab demonetization mein bahar nikla. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was really good. But I, but I do remember to their credit and I love them for that. Despite all the hard things, the two decisions that they made consciously was my sister and I would go to really good schools. Uh Uh, My mom, I'd like to believe in her past life was some British royalty. Okay. So she always wanted to, one, visit UK, which Uh thankfully happened earlier this year. Okay. But two was, my convent school. Okay. So I was sent to an all boys school. (laughs) My sister was sent to an all girls school. Okay. And we were trained in the (laughs) convent Christian education. Uh, and that was her eye in life. Uh, and they were just great schools. And, and yeah. we had a terrific education. And the second one was, Choti Choti Jitni Bhi Cheeze Kar Chakenge for us to be happy. Chahe Woh India Gate Jana Ho Gaya, Ya Chahe Woh Choti Si Koi Vacation Leni Ho Gai, Bus Me Travel Kar Lenge, Train Me Kar Lenge, Whatever the case is, whatever we can afford. But we will never stop the choice to be happy. And uh, And I think those are the two things I still imbibe in myself. You talk a lot, Angur, about... Um uh, I, I was as preparation for this I've seen some of the stuff that you you talk about um, you talk about making sure that your parents are happy and giving them a life which uh, you know they deserve uh, at, at at an age and I was talking to another friend of mine um, who told me that <clears throat> we are at an age I'm probably of maybe seven years younger than you right but I'm at an age now where I now remember what my mom was like at my age. Mm. So at 35, I, I was 10. So I remember 5th, 6th standard, what my mom was like. And that has just created a very increased appreciation for what she did for me then. When I was 2 or 3 years old, when my mom was 26, 28, whatever, I don't remember, right? But I remember now. And also, now they're getting, my dad is 67, 68, my mom is 61, 62. Um, <clears throat> they're getting into the age where suddenly gutna dukh hai, ya fir, you know uh, the number of the eye is increasing I can see them looking at their phone like this uh, 
and we are in that generation now where uh, at that age right now where the older generation is now reaching the an age where physically you don't know um you know how much longer they have to can they can travel independently or see the world yeah. uh, but you talk about that a lot so yeah. tell me a little bit about about what it means to you to give back uh, very tangibly to your parents i think we share the same sentiments the way that you were sharing it uh, resonated a lot with me our parents generation had an incredibly hard time uh, and it's not that they chose that but our parents were born somewhere around 1940 1950 yeah which was the early years of this country we were going through so much chaos there was so much uncertainty and at that point of time the only thing that mattered was survival everything else was secondary it was just survival and survival was not even survival of are bangla gaadi shan chauk there was like agle mahine ka kharcha um, and i saw that up close for so many years and despite that they stuck around they maybe made choices that they don't feel great about but they had no other choice but to make that choice that they yeah. had to make so I, i just feel so lucky that we've now reached a position where we can begin to give them some luxuries that they couldn't afford and those luxuries needn't be about money but about just getting them to see a life that they never saw but always looked at others as an aspiration and wondered if they would ever get that life whether it's a vacation whether it's um, anything else and thankfully we come from a family where we are not we're not materialistic we're not driven by uh, acquisitions of material goods of you no know, wealth or you no know, bangla ye sab cheeze my parents still stay in a very simple house which is one floor in a three bed three floor apartment in in faridabad we stay in an apartment that's the only asset we have we have frankly nothing else we drive a rented car my parents got one car that we finally bought for them after so many years and everything is just the the way it is so i like my parents uh, both of them follow iskon quite actively and and they are devotees so they like to travel with these iskon groups तो अभी वो साउथ जा रहे हैं द मंथ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर एंड दे आर गोइंग टू ऑल दैट ट्रिवेंड्रम एंड सो ऑन एंड दे वर बुकिंग होटल्स सो आई टोल्ड हम जस्ट स्टे इन अ नाइस होटल इट्स टोटली ओके एंड इन दैट मोमेंट ऐसे कितना महंगा होगा पाँच दस हजार रुपये का होगा बिकॉज वहाँ के होटल्स इतने महंगे नहीं हैं करेक्ट एंड दे लाइक पाँच दस हजार बिकॉज दे आर बुकिंग लाइक वो डेढ़ दो हजार रुपये के गेस्ट हाउसेज कि नाउ इट इट You have to realize कि ये पैसा हम अपने साथ नहीं लेके जाएंगे एंड नन ऑफ अस इन आर फैमिली आर फिक्सेटेड ऑन मनी विच आई फील इज एन इनक्रेडिबल प्रिवलेज टू बी एंड सो आई डोंट वी डोंट वॉन्ट लीव एनी थिंग फॉर आर किड्स एंड दे विल डू इट एवरी थिंग ऑन दर ओन सो इस लाइक ये पैसा ना हमें खर्च करना है चाहे लोगों की मदद के लिए या अपनी खुशी के लिए दीज आर दी ओनली टू थिंग्स तो अपनी खुशी के लिए जितना पैसा खर्च कर सकते हैं करेंगे लोगों की मदद के लिए जितना कर सकते हैं करेंगे एंड दीज आर दी ओनली टू वेज टू स्पेंड मनी so please use that and and i'm glad that they're beginning to get that their they had their first business class flight ever in their life earlier this year yeah. which is such a high like that is what i felt good about like it mm. wasn't the help that extends to others but just the ability to to send parents on a business class flight it was just such a high yeah uh, but yeah i i i feel <clears throat> i feel very passionate about both sides even ruchi's my wife parents uh, she lost her dad last december i'm so sorry uh, and her her mom is a terrific human so as much as we can do for her as much as we can do for my parents that's it yeah i agree with you like <clears throat> um and i actually see two very extreme ends okay so <clears throat> which i will kind of i will talk about it more when we do the money part or when we talk about money but my father comes from almost abject poverty um he lost his father when he was 7 my father was 7 so and he had four three younger siblings and my grandmother was pe- like just did, did 10th pass so she had to study b ed and then she did taught for a while like they lived in one room but my grandmother and my father both and i my grandmother lived with us when i was growing up after when we came back from the us so i remember her very well she used to go i used to walk with her to the bank state bank of india to get her pension okay which was i think 6000 rupees or 4000 rupees on the 1 kilometer walk from the branch to home 
almost 80% of that money was gone 500 rupees to her favorite auto guy <laughs> then she would go to the shopkeeper and get give it to the kids and i would always wonder and she said the same thing that whatever i have is to be spent and given away my father is very similar in his approach he he's he was uh, a ceo he was ceo of tech mahindra he's done very well for himself professionally he was a founder sold his company <clears throat> but very comfortable just kind of giving to an extent where he's where self preservation is never a part of his life i have to kind of get involved and say dad you're not older you are you know you need to be for yourself so when my when i started the same thing right business class for my parents or when they arrive at the at the airport they don't have to uber it like a yeah. good a camry will come to pick them up my parents enjoy it <laughs> okay they like are my my son is doing this they will take selfies send it to the family whatsapp group all of that they send it to their friends sakshi's parents on the other hand my wife, my in-laws are the kinds who you speak about which is mm. they will want to still save and you know they will want to itna kyu karna hai mm. for them the maths is not this is this is inconsequential in the larger mm. scheme of things it is this is way more than what we need to spend sure. so let's take a metro why do we take an uber and i'm like are but it takes 45 minutes up are you a lawyer aapko pasina aa jayega ab chaloge your your back is hurt just take an uber and go or get a cab or a driver no so then i struggle with <laughs> two very extreme <laughs> sets of parents one of whom obviously uh, enjoys the other one doesn't but um, uh, you're right i think the business class thing or you know seeing them in a in a really good hotel yeah um, or if they my dad loves whiskey Lovely. so when he like when he gets like gets his hands on a really expensive i'm like dad this is a nice bottle of whiskey and uh, we'll open it when this happens He like no, we'll open it now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. That's absolutely fine. But I think at where at at an age where seeing parents enjoy life is. And did you think like this when you were 25 or young, younger? I, I think I always wanted to do really big things in life. I didn't know why. Now I think I know why. It it is. it is essentially to gain the freedom to do whatever i want to do okay and back then i wasn't smart enough to figure that being rich is not the only way to do it going to the us is not the only way to do it or all of those other constructs that we just tend to fall into because they are society made i didn't have a mind of my own at that point uh, but now that i do i i realize that i always wanted to do something meaningful something impactful and it almost always was never about money but i thought it was about money for the longest time and that's why i believe i kept chasing it if not primarily then then definitely at the back of my mind but at some point of time i i freed myself from that and and now i think i'm a lot happier and at peace with with when did that happen when did that switch happen for you i believe there were multiple points the one big point was certainly when i came back from the us mm. <clears throat> that was at the age of 24 in 2004 I had only one goal growing up Shantanu and that was to become a NASA space scientist. Yeah. And that was all that I cared about. But what I realized was it was an infatuation and it was a very valid one. I loved space, I loved everything about it. I was good at it. So there was no reason for me to not believe my own self, but I also realized that it was infatuation because I never really dug into what is it that I will end up doing as a space scientist. Okay. I was always enamored by the idea that I would be a space scientist. That okay. was it. but once <laughs> reality struck i was an academic i was a phd student i began to experience what it would be to be a scientist all my life i was like i don't think i will enjoy this <laughs> i don't think i i'm good at it and that makes it harder for me to take that decision but i don't think i will be happy doing that mm. so when i came back dropping out of my phd much to the dismay of my parents in fact the entire world that i had except for ruchi my then girlfriend it was uh, It was this moment where I was like shit everything that I thought and worked towards in my life is gone every single thing like this was my only identity school mein agar kisi se puchoge ankur wari ko jante ho ha jante hain kya jante usko bare mein usko nasa jana tha teacher se puchoge wo kya jante usko nasa jana tha like everybody in my world just knew one thing ki ankur wari ko ko nasa jana hai and that became my identity it was almost as if i was fulfilling their dreams as against mine but once that dream was shattered i was like oh shit i'm lost i i don't have an identity i don't have a persona i don't have wajood hi nahi hai so uh, 
दैट इज मैन आई रियलाइज की शिट यार प्लान गोल्स का तो कोई फायदा ही नहीं है <laughs> तो जितना बढ़िया सा प्लान बना लोगे गोल बना लोगे और मैंने तो इतना बढ़िया सा प्लान बनाया था आई वॉज वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स इट आई वॉज गुड एट इट आई वॉज ऑन माई पाथ टू अचीव इट एंड येट इट इंट हैपन सो वॉट्स द बेसिस फॉर मी टू कम अप विद अन अदर प्लान द वर्ल्ड टेलिंग मी प्लान एट इंट वर्क फॉर प्लान बी प्लान बी इंट वर्क फॉर प्लान सी बट आई डोंट हैव एनी बेसिस टू कम अप विद अन अदर प्लान आई डोंट हैव एनी फाउंडेशन एंड दैट इज मैन आई आस्ट अ रैदर crazy question which was can i drift in life not in a bad way in a good way can i give serendipity a chance these were not the words that i was using back then because back then i was just dumb i was like mm-hmm. bhai kuch to kar lo but now i recognize the the motion in my head was is there a way that i can live life without a goal or a target and if yes then how would that life be and when i went to isb for my mba that was the second turning point in my life because that was yan year just fundamentally changed me it changed everything about me shantanu and i think the big reason was and i'm sure you had that same experience you surrounded by such smart people yeah that it leads to either of two things you end up feeling like shit <laughs> or you begin to see where you have a chance against them yeah and i'm so glad i don't know any way to explain why that happened but the second one happened for me it was like yaar main iit gold medalist se to compete nahi kar sakta scope hi nahi hai auqat hi nahi hai main is doctor is lawyer is defense personnel se compete nahi kar sakta lekin agar mujhe compete karna hai kyunki duniya to yahi hai what is it that i have that they do not have as easily and i figured a few things in life and i figured that i had a certain approach in life and that was all driven by my ability to drop out of my phd and come back because i would like to believe that of all the people who are there in a phd program in the us on a 100% scholarship top of their class on a fast track to complete their phd but not liking it how many of them would have the goals to come back and drop yeah. out and i don't believe that's a big number So there what was made you some, do it? What made you do it? I want to know that. Like, yeah, it was just so clear <clears throat> in my head, and I don't know why. And it's funny you ask this question because now, even, I get wrong things when I think about what I was thinking. Like, what gave me the conviction to drop out? It's not that something's waiting for me. My dad had started a business in 2002 when I left for the US. That business in two years accumulated more losses and financial debt. then we could ever afford to pay in our lifetime and we had never seen that kind of money but that was just the loss that accumulated because he is not a good businessman he is just a great professional so financial debt karz koi kaam nahi hai physics ki degree hai to kahin naukri bhi nahi milne wali phd chhod ke jab aap wapas aa gaye hain so there was nothing that suggested this was a smart move but in my head it was so clear that this is the thing that i should be doing because in my head it was like if i am not happy doing this then i will not be the best in this that's it i can and never it, be the best at anything if i'm not happy doing it and was it a was it an epiphany type realization or was it gradual no it was the, gradual yaar uh, no i ek cheez us zindagi ne mujhe sikha di hai ki wo jo log puchte hai na sir one turning point bata di sir turning point <laughs> कोई टर्निंग पॉइंट नहीं होता लाइफ में वो सिर्फ पिक्चरों में होता है करेक्ट लाइफ इज जस्ट अ वेरी स्लो ग्रेजुअल रियलाइजेशन अबाउट द लेसन दैट यू हैव सो फॉर मी दो टू इयर्स इन द यूएस वॉज जस्ट वेरी स्टार्क दैट आई वॉज सो गुड एट इट दैट आई वुड डम्प थिंग्स ऑन द एग्जाम शीट विदाउट एनी सेंस ऑफ वॉट इट मीन्स एंड स्कोर फुल and professors would be like we have never seen somebody replicate this complicated a uh, formula or proof or anything in our history of teaching <laughs> how the hell do you know this yeah. and like i am trained in the indian education system mujhe yahi sikhaya gaya ratna aur usko fir ulti karke number le aana taki class mein number 1 aa jao so i was just doing it like a robot but andar se koi jazbaat hi nahi tha and it was just very very clear if i stood in front of the mirror that this was something that i would never be happy doing wow i think that's the thing right you realize and then the period after that is you convincing yourself yeah. that you have realized yeah and i think that's the case with 
professional decisions um it's the case with breaking relationships yes. walking away from a toxic one for example you know well in advance yes. that this is not working for me yes. but then you take time to kind of build up the courage and it's actually amazing and tell me about what was it that you realized you uh, they talk about spikes in consulting right and isb is a uber competitive 10 month program and everyone is super sharp right but what what in that context of dropping out of your phd and having the clarity of thought to do that and having i think you call it uh you know um uh, serendipitous etc but in my view i think it's required like a ton of courage to do to do as 24 year old especially given how much of commitment bias we have right ki maine teachers ko bola hua bola hua hai mummy papa ko bola hua hai sab dost ko pata hai ki i'm going to do this yeah. and now i'm not doing it do i look like a failure yeah. uh, but to have that courage so what what were those spikes which you felt made you competitive or better than people who were traditionally successful or had not dropped out and it, it was the exact same thing shantanu that you 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 articulating which is i realize my superpower was the ability to not care to fucks about what the world thinks of me and i realized it's a superpower because until then i didn't know it was a superpower so i genuinely didn't care about what people would think of me when i came back from the us after dropping out of my phd i genuinely didn't care about what people would think if i dropped out of consulting and joined a startup called secondshadi.com i didn't care when people would be like why are you leaving group on and the glamour and everything that comes with it and starting up again and doing nearby i didn't care when people said why would you quit your own startup to go on and start making like what youtube videos and become <laughs> like a stupid influencer <laughs> so there's multiple points and that i think <coughs> is is my superpower that i have multiple identities in myself i would i would hate it if someone came up to me and said hey what do you do and all that i would give them is a designation at a company meri pura wajood nahi hai wo i am so many things so if you would ask me hey what do you do as like how much time do you have yeah. <laughs> because i i can go on and on with the things that i do and i would still not have enough time to explain what all i would want to do or who all houses inside of me so i would love to explore multiple dimensions to the life that i've been given and i do not shy away from making those bold courageous moves which are very hard for most people to do yeah but in my head they are super simple to make and i don't know where i get it from but i'm just so glad that i have that are you do you train yourself to not care about what people feel i think and this is a great question i think it is a muscle that you build it is a muscle that you build i don't think people are gifted with that i don't think people are born with it once you begin to do it you realize you know what nobody actually cares nobody was thinking about me to the extent that i was like so there there is no uh, effect that you you live with oh my god suddenly everyone's noticing my me that nearly is in the case people are just very busy with their own lives and couldn't care to fucks but i think the the bigger thing is the more you do it the more comfortable you get doing it and the more natural it then becomes which is crazy because people are still living with that hesitation so even a 1% higher jump than most people sounds like crazy and looks like crazy to most people so for me for example the recent move of stepping down as the ceo of nearby and then going deep into content was a very natural progression of what i have been doing for the last 15 years of my life i have been creating content for the last 15 years in my life but i never did it in the fashion that i'm doing it right now i've done it because i love doing it so it was a natural progression but to people is like oh my god startup vc funded blah 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 entrepreneur to what random influencer on on youtube and instagram and and creating reels how did that shift happen in my head it's just such a smooth journey but for people it's so dramatically different that i love it because it gives me this fictitious it's not actually in real fictitious bump in their head and in mine ki bhai iska to effort bahut zyada hai <laughs> and as we were talking about consulting mein ek cheez jo hum sikhte hain 2 by 2 matrix <laughs> i love 2 by 2 matrices they simplify so many things in life so imagine a 2 by 2 matrix on the x axis is actual effort y axis is perceived, perceived effort. effort 
आई लव टू बी इन द क्वाड्रेंट जहां एक्चुअल एफर्ट वन कॉमा टू एंड एग्जैक्टली वन कॉमा टू इज हाई हु वुड वांट टू बी देयर सो आई लिव दैट पीपल थिंक मैं चौबीसों घंटे सोशल मीडिया पे होता हूं एंड आई वर्क फॉर लेस देन टेन आवर्स अ वीक फॉर दिस कॉन्टेंट पीस बट आई लव इट बिकॉज पीपल थिंक I spend hundred hours a week on that. I only spend ten, and I'm still getting results that most people would not get after spending hundred, because I figured how to make it work for me. That's incredible. Tell me about uh, tell me about stepping down as the CEO of a company that you have built. Uh, talk about the journey of nearby raising capital. What you wanted to do, and <clears throat> how how it evolved into a place where you said, "I may not want to be a part of this anymore." there was a there was a really fascinating period here it taught me a lot frankly i think my nearby group one experience combined has shaped me up meaningfully in the in the way that i have as a leader as a person and the the genesis of nearby was the same belief that you house in you that india is the place to be i was part of a multinational setup Groupon was in 42 countries it had frankly no business being in 42 countries and because it did not have a really good public publicly listed journey it was just almost always behind what people expected of it and US and Europe were the largest two markets and they were meaningfully large for it to devote all attention there so understandably the attention that they would devote to a country like india was limited but i was living the india opportunity every single day and like boss this is a mega market and local commerce is the holy grail everybody has wanted to crack local commerce forever and has been unable to do that but imagine if all local merchants could come online and make their services available in a way that consumers can consume it that is it you have solved the most complex problem they didn't see it the way that i did and that's perfectly fine i understand where they were coming from but then wo keeda yahi tha ki you have to do something about that so the one big move which again most people i would argue will not make i was i was earning a ridiculous amount of money at groupon more than i thought i deserved how much were you making i was making base 1 and 1/2 cr this was in 2000 This was between 2011 and 2015. That 32 year old you were making crore and half 10 years back. 10 years back. That's crazy. And and I was sitting on stock options every year of about 200k. So it was it was just crazy. It was just unbelievable. So half crazy. in half yeah, base 50 50 yeah and half, half in stock yeah, option exactly. every year. Every year. As a 32 year old. Every year, right? So it was like and and this was me running a minuscule part of what Groupon's total portfolio is and still bearing losses. So I'm like how, how does that make sense <laughs> US is profitable it's it's far far bigger we are less than 1% of the total company's revenue we're not even profitable so it was just it was an imbalance and that's i mean 5 years out of b square 5 years out of isb yeah it, that's it, an amazing place to be is, right it is crazy yeah i i i often say this to people as a 24 year old i dropped out of my phd came back to india clueless confused felt like a loser at 31 i became the ceo of groupon india 6 years is what it took for me to get there and nothing explains it nothing explains it i cannot explain my success i genuinely cannot explain my how success. does that how does an opportunity like that fall into your lap was it a mentor at carney no it was a fascinating story yeah by the way huh. um so So Kani I joined in 2006 right after business school and I was there till 2009 and had a wonderful time in Kani I learned a lot smart people brilliant projects blah 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 but one and a half years into Kani I'm catching up with a friend of mine from business school Vivek Pawa and he had just started a new website called secondshadi.com he had sold his previous startup Desi Martini to Hindustan Times so he was already that internet sensation because nobody in india back then had sold anything for cash correct so he was like god and i really admired him <clears throat> and what he did and we were catching up and he's like yeah secondchadi.com do you want to help me on that and i was like look i have a day job i love my day job it's the first time i'm making money learning something new blah 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 so i don't think i will be able to do it full time but if you agree and i really hope you agree then 
I'd love to help you. And he was very gracious about it. Like, sure, let's see where it goes. Why and second, Shadi. dot com is for people who are getting married again. Again, wow. I, it was a great idea. It was the first time. I was like, wow, how did you even think about that? <laughs> yeah. It's a matrimonial website for divorces divorces. and widowed people. And I think that's a great idea. So he went on and did it full time. I did it. part time so i was a part time entrepreneur which i recognize as now an oxy- oxymoron there's nothing like a part time entrepreneur either you are or you're not so i tried to help him with what i would could and in about 2009 it got to a certain size where it said okay if you come full time it'll be a good idea so i took a massive pay cut i was earning which is also ridiculous in kani in 2009 i was earning about 35 lakhs yeah and um, I calculated what was the bare minimum that I needed to survive, and that was EMI वगैरह सब जोड़ के बारह लाख. हाँ. तो मैंने विवेक को बोला यार तू बारह लाख दे दे मुझे मैं आ जाऊँगा. You took a sixty-five percent pay cut. Uh, oh, you calculated that? Yeah, thank you. So <laughs> I, I, I took a I took a massive pay cut. Did you get like, stock options? No, the... no. Yeah, of course I get stock options, uh, and I joined. Huh. Right. So I, and this was it. And I, he was very gracious. He said, "You'll come as the co-founder." Oh, so you so you got the equity. The equity yeah. was so okay. equity upside. Was up and down. And we'll see where it goes. And we did that. How much did he give you? I just, I'm very curious about numbers. I because it was a running concern. I'm assuming no, 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 Uh, and bara lakh rupees, so that was that was great because this was a running setup, right? Yeah. So he had no business giving me that amount. So it was his idea. He had set it up. Everything, he funded it, everything, everything all was all his, like, and it was bootstrapped from his family business. So all was his. So seven percent and twelve lakhs a year as a twenty-nine year old, not as, bad. Yeah, not, not bad. bad. It's a good not bad. Not bad at all. I I lucked out, and then um, we had multiple other businesses come in. So two other batchmates from ISB joined Umang and Bharani, uh, and then Bharani moved on. Umang, Vivek, and I hung out. Then one big success that came out of that portfolio was Gadi. dot com. Okay. So what Vivek did to his credit was he <coughs> realized that the engineering talent to require to build these product out doesn't require it to be constantly innovating because these were small markets that we were in. So we could leverage the engineering team to build out multiple products, and that's what we did. So we built out an education product, a card portal, a women centric portal, of course, second shadi, several other things. and gadi.com became our big success yeah. so that became very quickly one of india's largest car classifieds website and so on aur us time pe cars ka bahut peak chal raha tha but i because this was my first experience of running a startup being an active part and seeing myself in that i'd like to believe i did a piss poor job okay i did all the classic mistakes that i would not want anyone to do i i didn't micromanage but i did not use technology to scale i tried to do it through the manual hard work aur main ekdam gissu ki tarah laga rehta tha 12 ghante 14 ghante kaam kar rahe hain ye sab kar rahe hain and we were a technology outfit so yeah. we could have easily built tools and systems and processes to scale that up and i was uh, i had my own very strong opinions about how the company and the business should run which were in conflict with vivek's and i can see why where he was coming from is the right one and maybe mine was just very oh you know, moralistically right and very idealistic and very nice and happy ki to logo ko pyar mohabbat se rakho unko kyun ye aise kar rahe ho basically conflict Uh, in but what 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 were the theme of the conflict was yeah there were there were multiple was it cultural was it business it was cult- it was cultural it was also business like he had been raised in a business family so he understood how to make money and wonderfully so like he runs a his his dad or his whatever family they, they run a very successful business and a very large one at that so he of <coughs> course had that dna mera dna consulting physics are physics consulting me matlab mera mera khoon to मेरे पापा और मेरी माँ का एक स्कूल टीचर और सेल्स प्रोफेशनल वाला है ना तो कभी कॉन्वर्सेशन ही नहीं हुई बिजनेस के बारे में कैसे चलाते हैं क्या करते हैं ये सब सो एवरी थिंग दैट आई हैड इन माई माइंड वॉज वेरी एकेडेमिक इट वॉज वेरी गूगल फेसबुक ऐसा होता है तो यहाँ ऐसा होना चाहिए लाइक ये सारी चीजें सिंपल थिंग एज विविक्स फैमिली बिजनेस इज अ मैनुफैक्चरिंग सेटअप एंड मैनुफैक्चरिंग सेटअप में सर मैम का कल्चर हो करेक्ट 
and it works yeah. there's nothing wrong with that by the way but yahan pe bol raha hai sir ma'am nahi hona chahiye logo ko ankur aur vivek bulana chahiye hey <laughs> and he's like yaar kaam agar ho raha hai na to in sab cheezon ki chinta mat karo yeah. because it is far more important for you to see how do they respect you as against what is it that they use to respect you aise the right so i i would conclude by saying that i was very dream like very sharukh khan in my approach ki you know aayenge tommy hilfiger ke t-shirt college mein pehn ke jayenge wo sab and he was like a dhanda guy mm-hmm. like paise banane hai profitable hai company ka paisa laga hua hai ped pe nahi ukta <laughs> and we got to a point where it was very clear that this would not be possible for the two of us to coexist so end of 2010 is when i moved out okay and uh, and i didn't move out with any significant uh, upside or anything like that what i told him was hey i have this equity which is vested some bit of it not all of it so it'll be really nice if you can give me some cash against this equity so that i can just live my life and and see what it is and he he agreed to that amount which i can't disclose uh and it was it was an amount that was reasonable it wasn't life changing it wasn't low low uh, it was say what i would have made in karni slightly plus plus if i'd stayed there. got it so ha ek saal ki tankh so opportunity cost there. was yeah was opportunity covered. cost was taken care of and uh and that's when the entire piece uh, happened but the <laughs> it it got to your remark of how did you even end up in that group on experience was so after that i was looking for opportunities and i was like hey what do i do what do i not do and um, i was very active on the isb alumni group which i think is a flourishing group and waha ek din ek email aayi ki there is this random company called rocket internet <laughs> which are looking for people to start their india business in x and i'll tell you what x is in some time and i like but yeah internet internet hai uh, rocket internet naam pe to kuch internet company hogi mere paas kuch kuch thoda bahut experience is cheez ko karne ka let's just see so i applied rocket internet 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 and they're looking for some people to start it so maybe i can and i find myself in a conversation with them So Rocket Internet at that point of time used to run Europe's largest fashion e-commerce company called Zalando. And I had done zero research about Rocket Internet, <laughs> which in hindsight was a good thing because if I did as all other smart people did, <laughs> I would have figured that it had a reputation that preceded it. Okay. And the reputation was that it is a absolutely disastrous place to be in <laughs> if you are worried about your safety and your stability as a professional <laughs> they would fire on the spot they would take decisions for business to <clears throat> shut down in like hours they are absolutely brutal and uh, and the stereotype was that this is like the absolute german way of of doing it which i didn't understand i didn't know what the german way of doing things <laughs> were uh, and i can testify that there's nothing bad about that So I just applied, and they were like, "Okay, great! You sound awesome. What we are doing is we're starting a Zalando equivalent in India, and it will start with selling shoes." And I'm awesome, great! That's a good challenge because I was selling second marriages so far, <laughs> so shoes would have been fun. And uh, we very quickly set up a team of about sixty people. Okay, and there was a lot of money that was coming in. It was driven by this guy called Oliver Samwer. Who okay. is one of the brothers? The, there are three Samuel brothers who own Rocket Internet. Oli is the key guy. He's the most ambitious one, the most fierce one, uh, also the most brutal one. And uh, we started that. And <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, after two months, two two and a half months of working and working full time, proper force ke saath. the company at that point of time which was number 1 in india was i believe the company called bigshoebazaar.com correct and mintra had just about made that pivot ye sab wagera to hame bigshoebazaar ko basically topple karna tha uh-huh. bigshoebazaar used to sell about 2000 pairs of shoes every day okay and like 2000 shoes ko topple karna hai and rocket internet is known to copy ideas and be fierce in execution correct which is what i learned So two and a half months, we had warehouses set up, we had 
purchase orders made for shoes across all brands i was the de facto marketing head so all the marketing plans were there sab kuch ho chuka hai except the legal structure of the company and <laughs> the legal structure of the company could not be made because we were a foreign entity and we were essentially trying to be a multi brand retailer and fdi multi brand retailing is not allowed in india correct so we spent hours <coughs> in the big four offices trying to find that structure and so on and so forth and at one point of time it was like no there is no structure the only structure is that you get an indian partner to take 50% to take 50% and you come in at 49 and i remember that call that oli had with three of us who were the founders of this setup and he was like hey it's your call now do you want to proceed with the current ambiguity or do you want to not proceed and we thought about it we like no we don't want to proceed because as the directors of the company suddenly there will be a lot more responsibility on our head why do we even want to go in there when he's like okay that's perfectly fine shut down so over the next two weeks there were three of us there was praveen who came from mckinsey i don't know if you sina. know praveen sina oh praveen sina was at this oh okay, okay praveen okay. sina arun chandra mohan and me arun went back to france he was from mckinsey huh. so he went back to some role praveen went back to mckinsey okay. and my job was in two weeks wind down the company pay everyone their dues get sign offs no liabilities nothing whatsoever and that's what i did and it was such a crazy experience <laughs> teen mahine mein we almost spent i don't even know what that number was but millions of dollars and then we suddenly had to shut everything down That's and crazy. literally fire 60 people who had zero fault of theirs to be in this and uh, and like okay this was a great experience up <laughs> next kya hai but it's people don't realize how hard it is to to make a company a shell company oh. not exist It, it, it requires it's it, a, it's a it, fairly it, it, complex process. It is a very very complex process, man. And I remember sitting with the CAs, sitting with the lawyers, getting through all of that. And the hardest thing is just getting the sign offs from. जो हमने offices rent पे लिए हुए थे, उनके advance payout, सब लोगों के severance packages, उनके salaries, सारे जो vendors के लिए advance payments गई थी, all of that had to go in. We had to get a sign off from all of them that there are no liabilities, no dues. Uh, and what happened to all the shoes that you guys had bought or you had to return no, we had just given purchase orders we hadn't bought them oh. we had given pos ki bhai ab bhej dena karodon ke aur fir unhone bola yaar jo humne wo advance payment kari thi us po ke se wo wapas karo the back and uh, and yeah so there was a lot of money that was just written off oh god uh, but it was like uh, it was uh, it, it was just learning in a very different way and <laughs> i don't surreal. i i i don't regret that point at all um but what happened was then and this is where this is true serendipity as as i believe my life is all about groupon at that point of time was a growing rage and groupon was only in us it had started in 2008 in chicago mm. and they were looking at global expansion and they then went to europe and lo and behold what they found in europe was a replica of groupon started by rocket internet called my city deals correct so now they had two choices start organically and build europe or just buy my city deals so groupon decided to buy my city deals and through that acquisition there was a larger groupon made one groupon was responsible for the groupon us business which was the core groupon yeah. and rocket internet was made responsible for the global expansion of groupon got it so all he called me one day and he's like hey have you heard of this company called groupon i was like yeah i have but i don't know much about it i was like well look it up and tell me if you're interested in the groupon india business i like abhi mere paas kuch kaam nahi hai so i like i don't have to look it up i'm interested <laughs> and that's how i got into groupon india and i started the that business wow which started in 2011 it was how crazy. long were you there for 4 years 2011 when it started till 2015 when nearby was started wow. and how what what was the decision there like with nearby and so the decision was that groupon had its own problems to take care of in us and europe meaningfully large understandably so so the 
amount of attention that they could devote towards India was limited. We were living and breathing their opportunity. So I believe there was a massive play. So we thought of something very, very crazy. And this was, again, one of those crazy things, which, again, I realize comes naturally to me, but most people <laughs> call it crazy. So I remember being in a management meet in either KL or Seoul. I don't remember where, but it was in Asia. It was either in Malaysia or in Korea. And this is where the top 30 people of the company get together every quarter. And I'm speaking to a very dear friend of mine who was running APAC. He was technically my boss, but he's a wonderful <laughs> guy and, and, a, and a very dear friend. And I'm like, hey, Joel, wouldn't it be cool if we could actually buy our countries out? And I remember jamming with him on this idea <laughs> for that night. Like, just you guys have seen the latest episode of the latest episode. We started at 8 o'clock, we were sitting at 12 o'clock. And uh, he doesn't drink. I'm, I'm, I don't drink. And, and we are just jamming, 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 eating fruits like this or something. <laughs> and uh, he got really excited. I got really excited. But I chose to do something about it. And maybe he did. So I then made a document and a proposal for Groupon headquarters saying, we want to buy Groupon India from you. And when you say we, you mean you and the employees and... Uh, yes. So me and the core management team. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? You're a 100% subsidiary of a publicly listed company listed in the US. This, this thing has never happened before. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Like, what matters is, can it happen and why? And the thesis was that you don't have to be in 42 countries. So as a smart investor, and Groupon ka CEO is this guy called, at that point was a guy called Eric. Hmm. And he's a very smart businessman. So he gets it. I was like, Eric, you, don't, you own 42 different stocks and some stocks are more valuable than the others and you don't have to be closely involved with all 42. Why don't you just dilute some of them, continue to enjoy the upside if there is any and focus on the ones that are truly making you more money, which is how an investor would behave. So he got it. I was like, okay, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. What will they take? But if we have spin off and Operationally, we are involved, nahi hai, financially involved, nahi hai, legally involved, nahi hai, but we just stay on the cap table as a minority. And if there is an upside, we enjoy it. That makes sense. Okay. So that was what we proposed. And then luckily, I got in touch with Mohit Bhatnagar from Sequoia. He loved the story. He's a very story guy and he loves those ambitions. And, and we showed them what our ambition was. Uh, and stars aligned and uh, we we bought the majority shareholding of Groupon and Groupon's Groupon India's business and that oh, you an, Sequoia and, and Groupon. Groupon as three almost equal members of uh, the, the company, of nearby of nearby wow that's an interesting way to start it. it's not like an idea which you have no, and you seed funded no, and then you grow no. it But and you, then the challenge started because then it was like, oh, brand name change karna hai because I didn't want that group on identity, that hangover, ki deals, hai, discounts, hai, sab agara, agara. I wanted it to be a lifestyle one. I wanted it to be local commerce. We had to build our tech from scratch because Groupon ka global tech, tha, which was super shitty and we didn't want anything to do. So we had tech team puri banani padi. Pura brand name change, ke saath, communication to customers, communication to vendors, communication internally. So all of that happened. So it was like we had a running business of sorts. But that running business was always in question because we had to literally start all over, all again. over again. And how much money did Sequoia... Uh, 17 million. It was a really big check. That, it's to a, buy out and primary or... No, it was all primary. It yes, was all primary. So you had 17 million on day zero yes, to, or, or kind of the new day zero yes, to kind of start yes. off. That That's a lot crazy. of money. That actually. is a lot of money, which, we, which I think was our biggest mistake. Uh, I believe that that was, uh, that was something that I should not have agreed to. But at that point of time, it was like... This was the first time I was raining money in my life. Because before that, second shadi, gadi and everything was bootstrapped. Yeah. We'd never even seen what it, I had never seen a term sheet. Yeah. I just knew what it was, but I had never seen one. So when we got, everything was about zada se zada valuation, zada se zada paisa, paisa. zada se zada <laughs> uh, And that was such a mistake because we weren't ready for that 17 million because we were not that big at that point of time. But this is like 110 crores or so at this that is, time. This was 100, precisely 107 crores at that point of time. 107 crores at that point. And That's a lot of money. To that is a lot of money, man. <laughs> it's a lot of money. So the mistake started from there. Mistake number one, 
was uh, believe that marketing is the only problem we have. <laughs> what a clusterfuck of a mistake. <laughs> so we started to spend obnoxiously on marketing. I was spearheading that. So I take full accountability. Number two, uh, creating a, a supreme work culture starts with having a expensive office, starts with having perks and privileges that people can show off, starts by having all, all these merch and everything. Really bad call. This 2015, right? When everyone was doing this. Amazon. This was, No, unfortunately, uh, we were in that wave when that was the high. Yeah. Like this was a time, I'm, I'm sure you remember, this was a time of tiny owl. Yeah. Uh, housing. Housing. <laughs> like going crazy maverick shit, right? <laughs> Hoardings le rakhe hai. Celebrities sign up. Kar rahe hai. I remember housing and bought housing.com for like a million or two exactly, million. Exactly, right? Yeah, and, it was crazy money. They had run. I, I remember going to an agency... And, and saying we wanted to run a marketing campaign and then they're giving us the the story that housing ne kaise 220 crore kuch kharch kare on outdoor advertising <laughs> har ek jagah sirf housing hi housing hai to I'm like huh? yeah, this is the shit kyunki har log housing ko jante hai but bad call in hindsight and then 2016 I'm sure you'll remember is when the funding winter started correct right and we were burning through cash like shit we were we were losing almost Five to six CR a month. That's crazy. That is crazy, uh, and this was on a on a base on a revenue base of no more than four CR. So four CR ke revenue base, we have six crore loss. Kar rahe the. So our expenses ten crore. Ten crore. We have 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 ten crore. Time for tough calls. And, and you have to preserve cash. You have to do it. Because especially for this loss-making engine. Um, and that was when in Feb or March of 2016, um, we had our first layoffs. And that was really hard. Like that hit me like nothing else had ever hit me in my life. Did you do them yourself? or we, uh, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 100%. I wouldn't do it through anybody. 400-odd uh, people total size and we laid off 80 odd people wow. so this is like 25 percent or so and it wasn't pleasant at all it was like really hard hitting because i had never imagined to be in this spot and people had trusted me and people had trusted the vision of nearby and everything that we stood for and we had had such a wonderful launch party only a few months back in nearby group on all those nice fancy things and here we were staring at our own death and they had zero fault in this like zero involvement responsibility for yeah. being where we are so i just i took it very hard and uh, i think i learned a lot about myself during that period and uh, and yeah that that phase almost three to four six months was a really hard one recovering the confidence of everyone recovering my own confidence in my own self figuring what to do next and blah 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 and then uh that happened. So, in 2019, we became profitable. And that was the first time we became profitable. At what revenue uh, level? We were, we were doing almost close to exchange. Actually, actually I'll tell you We were doing about 600 crores of GMV a year. Okay. And our revenue base was about 12 watt percent. So, about 70, 75 CR. Okay. And we were profitable. So very good. Yeah. 600 crores ka business per month, sizable. Exactly. 600 crores ka GMV and making money. Correct. Exactly. But we were a failure because we were much smaller than who we had thought we would be. And that is the unfortunate outcome of venture capital. There's nothing wrong with that, but it is lopsided towards the power law. So suddenly... A almost $100 million sales company profitable is not a success, which would be a grand success in any other dimension in Agreed. life. Only because you had pitched that you would be a $100, $100 million revenue company uh, because you wanted to be a unicorn. Everyone wanted to be a unicorn. You wanted to be a billion dollar value. And here you were a value of what, 150, 200 million, which was not enough, quote unquote, ROI for the money that anyone had put in and rightfully so. And I feel that that's where I realized that 
while the game is beautiful early on when you're raising money and you have all capital at your disposal to make things happen if for whatever reason within your control or outside of your control it doesn't pan out then you are a failure in the sense of no financial outcome for the investors no financial outcome for the employees no financial outcome for the founders and i was nearly not as smart as you where i resisted and morally so of any secondaries along the way nothing whatsoever so all my equity and everyone else's was just tied down to nearby equity and uh, i till date have never sold even one stock of nearby i still own uh, i'm the single largest individual owner of of nearby but i <coughs> have never ever sold anything because of lack of opportunity or because you didn't want to or Both. you felt that you will do it only when everyone else does it exactly right so it's not that there were people dying to buy that stock <laughs> but even if I, there were i would not sell because i was like no that is not morally right for me my exit should be tied to the outcome of everyone else's as well and until that doesn't happen which doesn't include necessarily just employees but also investors and anybody else uh, but that didn't happen but what happened which i'm very proud of is that we built a wonderful team we built a terrific culture we were very passionate about what we were doing and we were doing well in it and we were the market leaders in that space at least and i had two founders ravi and snehesh who i absolutely love adore and i believe that they are far better than me to run this setup than i would and i also realized that as a profitable company my responsibility as a ceo would be dramatically different than one who would be required to run a vc funded company and uh, i have two very dear friends akhilesh and ankur singla who are also founders they started in 2009 <coughs> with me so we have literally grown up together and i remember one evening they were like boss the opportunity cost that you're sitting on is massive you have a great team you have done your bit in setting up a business that can now go on from here and frankly we don't think and they were right when they said that we don't think you staying in here or your presence is now going to materially alter the outcome of the company so you might as well take yourself out of the equation and let them run it while you go and seek whatever else is out there was that hard to hear it was, or was it relieving to hear no it wasn't relieving to hear it was uh, it was it wasn't even hard to hear because they are very different from me but whatever they say i always hold it with the highest regard because they they always watch out for me we all do so they're on your side they're definitely on our side so i knew that there was no ulterior motive for them to say it as against just wishing the best for me but i took a fair bit of time to consume and process it what it meant because mera pura wajood meri puri identity sirf nearby ke through thi like i was the nearby founder that was who i was at least at that point of time and uh, i had to see if i could dissociate myself with that dissociate myself with the entire job of building nearby and uh, i wasn't worried about what i would do next but i was worried about what life would mean without nearby um, but so this is your second dropping out of phd this is ha uh, huh, this is i dropped out of so many of these things <laughs> and I, no i love it now i'm going to used to it but uh, then it was just very uh, clear i i took the decision i had a word with ravi and snehesh i then had a word with the board How was that? Was it did it come as a surprise? Did they were they no, expecting no, it? No, no. I, I I think the good thing is that we were at a certain size where we all fully respected and appreciated the fact that three founders was an overkill. Yeah, we didn't need that. Okay. Because we knew that our growth is tied to the growth of the market, and growth of the market, which is all of this is discretionary spending, Correct. like restaurants, spa, salons, and so on. ग्रोथ ऑफ द मार्केट इज टाइट टू द ग्रोथ ऑफ द जी डी पी करेक्ट तो हम ना उखाड़ के भी इस मार्केट को ज्यादा तेजी से नहीं ग्रो कर सकते विच मीन्स हमारी भी ग्रोथ ज्यादा उससे नहीं होने वाली एट बेस्ट वी विल ग्रो ट्वाइस एज मच एज द मार्केट बट इफ द मार्केट इज ग्रोइंग एट सिक्स सेवन परसेंट आई वील ग्रो एट फिफ्टीन परसेंट आई वी कॉन्ट ग्रो एट फिफ्टी परसेंट आई करेक्ट विच इज वॉट अ वी सी फंडेड बिजनेस शुड लुक एट सो दैट जस्ट मेंट If you're growing a 15 percent a year, you don't need three smart brains to be yeah. poking and getting into each other. You're cutting, you're cutting, you're cutting. It's not a mind lagging. It's not a thing. And uh, it was 
it was a conversation which just ended very fast and i was like yeah this uh, this makes sense like they didn't expect me to volunteer to step down but once they heard it they're like okay now uh, this is good this is good and ravi and snesh still run the business no so now uh, things have changed considerably so now things have changed considerably uh, snesh also moved on snesh now heads product for google search india really so he is uh, he is having a very different strain and a and a wonderful one at that he's a brilliant techie so snesh was the cto okay and the co-founder and he's one of the best techies that i've worked with because he also has a business mind so i'm sure he's going to do terrific there ravi because we were invested in by paytm in 2017 that's uh-huh. what happened we got invested in by paytm paytm okay so ravi now manages the entire business of paytm for what they called o2o or online to offline a part of which is also nearby understood and, and that's how it is so so ravi handles a far bigger portfolio which includes nearby and snehesh and and i are not part of it operationally wow Wow, that's amazing! And then, and then once once you stepped away, was it like a six month soft touch transition, or was yeah. it overnight? No, no, it wasn't overnight. Yeah, I wanted to. So, uh, communication first internally. I I tendered my resignation to the board. I believe in June, twenty nineteen. June twenty nineteen, and I uh, formally moved out of the company end of uh, September twenty nine. No, end of October twenty nineteen. So three four months. Yeah. So three four months, just making sure everyone's transitioning well. People don't see it as my. People don't see it as a signal of my disbelief in the company. That was the most important thing for me, because until then the entire world knew of Variku as the nearby founder, Ravi and Snehesh as the ones making it happen from the back door. Yeah. Uh, from behind the scenes. But for suddenly Variku to move out meant that it's no trust in the company. So now what are we going to do in the company? That was the only thing that I was optimizing for. That was my primary concern, and uh, and we did that really well. Uh, were there people who were there who who had come there just because you were there? Employees, for example? No, I, I I wouldn't give myself that credit. What had happened though was I started creating content in video content in 2015. with a very different purpose okay. that was to create an employer brand for nearby okay. because we want the best pay masters we want the best known brand so if we had to attract the right kind of talent we wanted to have a communication directly with potential employees kyunki wo dheere dheere persona at least startup community pe banne laga tha hr wali team aake bolti thi you know we often ask them why do you want to join nearby and they say ankur wali ko but but i don't i i think they were just being nice i don't think there were people because i was there the no friends from campus or people like senior nahin, senior nahin, folks nahin. who had nay 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 um all very professional well uh, we got together because of these connections so ravi for example is the best friend of my batch friend from isb who's also a really good friend okay so when we were looking for somebody but that was in 2011 so ravi has been with group on a nearby since 2011 so he's had a longer stint than me and he i hired him to head south india hmm. and i remember speaking to prameet who's the friend in question uh, from isb i said yaar koi bata pk abhi call him pk and then ravi kar raha and ravi has been a out and out sales guy ha huh. his entire life and he's terrific at that but he's also a great guy wonderful person so culturally vibed together everything happened snehesh is the kya kaise kaise linkages hote hain so one of the key members and and earlier management team of group on uh, ankur saraogi his elder brother his elder brother's best friend is snehesh wow and they went together uh, to it karakpur okay to uh, to snehesh <coughs> wahan se hame pata chala to ye aise aise chote chote karke kahin se milte rehte hain are you guys close are you close to vivek not uh, vivek anymore okay no we don't talk but ravi and snehesh yes we are and uh, uh, praveen and your no praveen did Arun, you call your shoe Arun, brand something like your shoe uh, marketplace was it named something? yes we we called we called it asasa a s a s a dot com koi to ali ka hi fetish tha the name should be easy and rhythmic okay but uska koi meaning zaruri nahi to zalando ka jaise koi meaning nahi but zalando just is rhythmic yeah sounds zalando. phonetically nice yeah exactly right to zomato Zalando, huh. huh. वैसे करके 
تو اساسا ہم نے اچھا اساسا کیونکہ اساسا کا کوئی اور مس پروننسیشن نہیں ہو سکتا جیسے فنی اسٹوری جب ہم نے گاڑی ڈاٹ کام لانچ کیا ہمیں لگا کریکر آف اے ڈومین ہے گاڑی ڈاٹ کام پر جیسے ہی ہم کسی ڈیلر کے پاس جاتے تھے بتا رہے گڈی ڈاٹ کام تو ہماری اسپیلنگ تھی جی اے اے ڈی آئی وہ پروناؤنس کرتے تھے جی اے ڈی ڈی آئی مطلب ختم ہی ہو گیا تو لائک وائرالٹی کے نام پہ تو تماچا happened in life shadow is i have consciously reduced my uh, relationships where i spend time really and uh, and i think it's partly because i'm really happy and content with where i am in life with the relationships that i have and uh, i I'd, i'd much rather distribute myself as thin as it is to thousands and millions of people through my content then house these relationships where i have to invest significantly a lot because i believe ki wo ek aise point mein zindagi mein jahan wo khud ko sambhal lenge unko meri zarurat frankly nahi hai main to hu bhi nahi koi bada insaan lekin agar mera experience at the age of 42 can help a 22 year old navigate through their life i feel that's a far more meaningful contribution to make while i may never know that person personally wow so has that come with parenthood in a way or has that come with like f- like 12 years 13 years of entrepreneurship is not easy yeah. especially second shaadi then yeah. a three month yeah. thing which goes up and down like yeah. this and yeah. then a group on and then buying it out then the funding winter yeah. it's not easy this is yeah. i'm sure these 10 12 years would have been more stress than fun on average no yeah it was fun i will be i'll be lying if i said that it was more stress i never i i very rarely feel stress okay i i do worry but that worry never paralyzes me and it never overcomes the better of me okay so i i don't lose my temper i don't lose my patience i rarely find myself shouting at someone or or saying something that i regret saying and that i think has is just my temperament it, it's not something that i've had to work on it's just the way that i was always and mm. and i don't remember a different side of me so uh, i'm a irrational optimist and i always believe that there is something better out there that you haven't yet figured and i always believe that irrespective of the problem you're facing there is a solution out there if you were to devote and meditate on it and and then i just center myself on that truth and nothing else so بہت بہت مشکل تھا اٹ واز ڈفیکلٹ انٹینسلی ڈفیکلٹ بٹ کبھی بھی ایسا نہیں لگا کہ یار زندگی برباد ہو گئی کہاں پھنس گئے کیا ہو گیا کہاں جائیں گے کیا ہو جائے گا دے ور سیورل مومنٹس دیٹ آئی ڈنٹ گو ان ٹو دا ڈیٹیل آف ویئر موسٹ پیپل ووڈ ہیو بین لائک فک اوور ختم بٹ یا دیر از دیر از اے بلیو دیٹ دیر از لائف دیٹ ہو جاتا ہے وہ ان آنٹرپرنل جرنیز ہاؤ ور سکسیزفل آن دی آؤٹ سائڈ آلویز ہیو نیئر ڈیتھ سچویشن and so we were also talking about it we have gone through them multiple times and it's not easy i'm also a very optimistic person very positive generally you'll see me happy um uh, but those are testing situations yes. right and beyond and also you're a father right you're, yeah. you're you have uh, an 11 and a 5 year old which is also perspective yes. creating in a way but like there is something way bigger than yeah. what you do outside the home absolutely. which is inside the home absolutely absolutely it is it is fascinating yeah. parenthood teaches you a lot and it just it it hits you hard that you realize the experiences that they will go through the way you conduct yourself in front of them and in real life is going to materially shape them as a person and that suddenly feels very daunting because i don't think anything of what we did at nearby materially shaped anybody who worked at nearby <laughs> like unki zindagi بنتی رہے گی ڈھلتی رہے گی کچھ ہوتا رہے گا یہاں تو تم کسی انسان کا وجود کریٹ کر رہے ہو تھرو ہاؤ یو امپارٹ دا ویلیوز آل یور لرننگز یور ایکسپیرینسز ان اے مینر دیٹ یو اسٹل الاؤ دیم ٹو بی ہو دے وش ٹو بی اینڈ جسٹ نیچر دیم سیلز این انڈیپینڈنٹ پرسن بٹ ہیو اے کانٹور آف آف ویلیو سراؤنڈنگ اٹ سو دیٹ دے ہوپ فلی نیور ڈرفٹ اینڈ ود ازما رائٹ ہوز اولڈر Vidur is older. Vidur is 11. He's 11. Okay. So Vidur was born right after 
the groupon uh, thing happened in in india in 2011 uh-huh. and uzma was born in the year that paytm invested in the company and we uh, thankfully came out of an year that experience oh wow but tell me about uh, tell me about what you do now tell me about what how much time do we have <laughs> oh, we have plenty <laughs> no, of time no, no, no. no, uh, and so you're right right um, and you spoke about uh, entrepreneurship being full time or part time and just yesterday i was with my last client at bikinzi and i i now spend 2 3 days a month with bikinzi i spend a couple of days a month with uh, a private equity fund blue chip just talking about like helping them with their consumer portfolio acquisition in the space and so on there are control transaction fund right uh, i i do this the barber shop i have invested in founders which I, which i am a very i mean in, i mean involved investor till the extent the founder is asking so the founder leans a lot ki yaar is se connect kara do is se connect kara do i will do it and i will do a good job right i'll not only make the connect but i'll if it's for example they want to meet a marketing agency i'll talk to the marketing agency guy ki hey ye founder hai iska context hai this is what they need their early stage do you have some time then i'll talk to them and say hey this guy works with us he has five projects this is what he will typically charge you does it make sense and then i'll make the connection so i do a lot of effort in small small things and uh, my client uh, was telling i can't disclose because it's still a live client of mckinsey but uh, he said ki yaar tere paas don't Box you have client. a full business to run that? <laughs> and i told him ki yaar you know honestly this was true maybe 10 years back or maybe before that ki a founder or a ceo or a senior person will have to do one thing for 20 hours and obsessed with it to create value i believe that today leverage is everything yes and if i am able to create a senior team like the ravi and snehesh for you who are better at doing this yes. than me my job fundamentally is to bring in expertise and intelligence from the world and perspective from the world into the company yes. through for example this 2 hour discussion sure. i'm sure there are 20 things that when the company uh, employees see it or if muskan is seeing it she'll be like okay cool here are five things that ankur said in that discussion or with mckinsey or with the clients and so on yeah. so i believe today that bombay shaving company is one of five things that i do <laughs> right it may be the ma- main thing that sure. i do but i have to do four other things to take that forward but tell me about what you do like and how do you like spend time doing all the all the cool stuff of course content is very public but what all do you do bunch of things let me start with the with the vision of what i do and and why i do that so i i have this belief shantanu that most people in their life make choices in their life from a point of ignorance and not awareness what that means is that when they're making that choice in life they don't know any better and that's why they make the choice that they do give me an example for example in class 11th we chose science commerce and humanities <laughs> with zero basis <laughs> just purely on our marks कि अगर अच्छे हैं तो साइंस ले लो अगर बिजनेस फैमिली से हो या भाई बहन सीए है तो कॉमर्स ले लो अगर गंदे नंबर आए तो ह्यूमैनिटीज ले लो इट्स फक्ट अप एंड सो मेनी काउंट्स राइट बिकॉज यू हैव नो आइडिया व्हाट इट इज टू बी एन इंजीनियर और अ डॉक्टर और अ लॉयर और अ सी और अ हिस्टोरियन और अ जर्नलिस्ट और एनीथिंग लाइक दैट यू जस्ट ड्रिफ्टिंग दीज आर डिसीजन दैट यू टेक फ्रॉम अ पॉइंट ऑफ इग्नोरेंस दैट स्टिल फुगेबल बिकॉज इट्स वेरी अर्ली most people decide on their life partners on the basis of ignorance it's not that they have to test out multiple people and date multiple people that may not be our culture but they don't even know who they're looking for yeah. before they decide who they're going to spend their rest of life with to no baseline there's no baselining right there there is no self awareness there's no understanding of what i want what i don't want there are no boundaries that have been discussed or defined so it's just this loose gamble <laughs> that people take on the most important thing in on life on one of the most important decisions that you will make in your life far more important than the things Science that we science or arts or hum hum company profile glass door pe jaake char cheeze check karenge panch logon se baat karenge ye karenge lekin ladka ladki se agar pyar karna hoga to bhai wah khoobsurat hai to kar do and that's it now it goes there i like can be fall in love with the face not with the mind and we rarely recognize what it is that we love in them yeah so i believe that the reason I have gotten to where I've gotten in life is because most of the decision that I made once I decided to drop out of my PhD and come back were from a point of awareness which was I knew why I was doing it I knew what would be the worst thing that could happen to me if I did it and I knew how to get out of that worst thing if it were to happen 
and i had explored other things to figure that this is from what i know the best thing that i would want to do because it makes me happy and i believe that that's one of the big reasons why it has worked out besides of course crazy amounts of luck that helped me in my favor i believe that we are inarguably at a point in history where choices are being actively made on a basis of ignorance purely because there is abundance of choices there are so many things to do like hamare time pe kya tha engineer tha lawyer tha ca tha yahi sab cheez hai doctor ban gaye agar wo ho gaya but people can become youtubers people can become podcasters people can become dj's people can become actors people can become in- singers people can of course become all the traditional career choices that they have people can freelance people can never have a job people can have the best job people can stay wherever they want and work for anybody across the world people can do nfts people can become crypto web3 developers whatever they want to do it's endless which is why most people are ironically going more and more to the traditional routes because that's where safety lies you think so i believe so wow so all the aberrations <clears throat> of a web3 developer at the age of 17 wagera wagera they are aberrations they are not the norm the norm is we are finding far more people sitting for government jobs than we ever did far more people applying for defense positions than we ever did far more people wanting to become doctors and engineers that we ever did wo number kam nahi hua hai like aisa nahi hai ki neet ke exam mein kam log baithte hain ya upsc mein kam log baithte hain wo jitna tha hamare zamane mein usse bahut zyada ho chuka hai kyunki seatein badh chuki hain opportunities badh chuki hain and ye understanding ho chuki hai ki yaar itni sari cheezon mein hum kaise choose karenge wahi ban jate hain jo maa baap bolte hain ya humne dekha hai chalta hai unless of course there becomes a pattern like entrepreneurship now is like the cool thing but how many people truly want to become entrepreneurs in this country and how many have the gall to actually go through yeah. what you have been through or we have as as a collective very few they're just doing it because dur se acha lagta hai are 100 million dollars raise ho gaye are dekho bangla gaadi khareed liya are dekho fortune 40 under 40 mein aa gaye wo sab ho gaya they don't know what it is to become one so that is where i'm coming from i believe that awareness is critical in the life choices you make and it's becoming harder and harder to make yeah. those choices so what i would love to do is to build whatever you may call it an entity a company a startup a movement a collective whose only purpose is to help spread awareness not make people make choices not to suggest this one is right this one is wrong simply and simply make people aware okay about anything and everything that you could the way that i'm doing it is through content that's the start of it that's not the necessary end of it so today if you were to ask me i split my time between three main things i create the content that you see yes and that's a well oiled engine it's across all platforms it's again centered on awareness and every social platform has a different persona that i cater to and a very different identity and a very different tg that i'm speaking to as well I am also along the side building my education startup or let's say an education business I don't want to call it startup because I'm doing it very differently from what I did in the past it's bootstrapped it's profitable from day one it doesn't have any esops no shit chat it is money given to people at the end of every quarter basis the profits that the company makes redistributed back true dividend true dividend right true dividend interns in my company are earning 8 lakhs a year these are interns and this is because it is profit pool hai a common pool hota hai usme sab wo bad jata hai but what's the education business so it's it basically are fully online with a part element of live classes built into it again around the concept of awareness so pick up pieces where people are ill aware and make them aware for example there are four courses that are run right now the biggest selling course is a course on time management i manage my time i believe wonderfully well and that is one of my superpowers and i think that people struggle to manage their time i have no idea how to do it and i just teach time management 
I remember you told me. I told you that hey, we're doing this, and <clears throat> and you said, can you drop me an email with the details? I said yes, I will. And you very cutely you responded back saying, I will check it at one p.m. when I check my emails for the day. I was like, wow, that is that is that is that is incredible discipline and very transparent about about uh, about <laughs> expectations. Setting also. गुस्सा हो जाते हैं. मैं अपनी ईमेल्स दिन में सिर्फ तीन बार चेक करता हूँ. So my my emails only hit my inbox every uh, only three times a day. So okay. I have a software that I use where my emails are parked, blocked. स्क्रीन ब्ला 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 एंड वो दिन में सिर्फ तीन बार मेरे इनबॉक्स में आती है क्योंकि मुझे ये रैंडम पना नहीं चाहिए कि कभी भी कभी भी दे गया तो कभी भी क्योंकि फिर जिंदगी पर तुम एंड आई गेट अ लॉट ऑफ ईमेल्स नाउ सो कांट बी पॉसिबल एनी वे सो सो टाइम मैनेजमेंट इज वन हाउ टू स्टार्ट अप इज अनादर वन वेयर आई गो थ्रू एवरी थिंग दैट आई हैव लर्न बट नॉट फ्रॉम अ पिच टेक कैसे बनाते हैं फंड कैसे रेज करते हैं ये सब वगैरह वगैरह नहीं आई गो इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ वट यू एंड आई वेंट थ्रू कि टीम कैसे बनाते हैं ई सॉप्स कैसे डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करना चाहिए प्रोडक्ट का एम कैसे बनाएंगे क्या क्या प्राइसिंग एलिमेंट्स होने चाहिए फर्स्ट थाउजेंड कस्टमर्स कैसे आएंगे आइडिया कैसे चूज करोगे मेंटल मॉडल्स अराउंड दैट पब्लिक स्पीकिंग इज अन अदर कोर्स हाउ टू यूट्यूब इज अ कोर्स अराउंड हाउ टू थिंक ऑफ यूट्यूब एज अ इनकम स्ट्रीम एंड बिकम प्रोफिशेंट एन इट एंड देर मल्टीपल आई थिंक ऑन लिंक or somewhere where you had put your entire youtube strategy to the yes, public yes so this is what i have learned and it is extraordinarily rich yes. and that has become now a, a full fledged yeah, course a, it's a full fledged course now it's a, it's it's a two month live cohort and then a fully recorded on demand course so that's something that that is shaping up well um it's it's immensely profitable ridiculously profitable i would say the thing that i'm doing very well which most people struggle with is i'm using digital marketing because i understand that very well for the last 10 years of my experience to the hilt and that is something that has allowed me to scale and scale wonderfully so and most people don't understand that as well so they are at a disadvantage in that sense and then the third place where i spend my time is just meeting entrepreneurs investing in them if they wish to mentoring them if they if they can um if they need it and if i can help and and just being part of the entrepreneurial system as such far away from the conferences and the summits and all those things panel discussions yeah. <laughs> hame ko wo sab nahi karna hai i don't want to be in a cocoon in a yeah. in a well but i definitely want to help first time founders for sure yeah uh, just not hopefully make the same mistakes that i made because i didn't know any better it's amazing the quality of founders that are coming out like i feel like an idiot which is a great thing um i was telling you yesterday i met uh, 12 high school students uh who in their high school have created uh dialysis machines that are micro dialyzers they have created one guy had come in with a bionic arm a functioning bionic arm made from cotton and motors uh because his neighbor is is an amputee and he felt that she needed him and he was can you imagine ankur a 14 year old coming in and saying that a bionic arm fulfills two purposes cosmetic and functional if it does not look good however functionally good it is person won't like to wear it cuz she will not look nice she don't want to look like terminator i oh, think that's insane so like acha bhi dikhna chahiye exactly or and then the thumb is the most important one yeah. so i have put three motors here i put one motor here i said where have you coded it he told me he learned uh, c++ for that microcontroller wow. then i said okay i was just testing to see whether many times kids of that age and it's fine but parents yeah, is, yeah, yeah. will come and help i said can can you show me the 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 the, the Uh, the back end of this controller he opened up the script it was and he showed me line by line by line he did he he knew his business Brilliant. inside and he knew i like then he said there are 10 doctors who have spoken to but i don't want this to be surgically attached to the stump i want it to be mechanically attached and it should still be able to do the work and there are i was blown away so his commercial understanding product understanding maturity 14 of the of 14 year old 14 or 15 incredible. year old of the chart so i am super excited about yeah. just purely the quality of founders that is coming out and you're right entrepreneurship is hard but i think that the muscle the generation has in terms of risk appetite you know if we fail it's okay there's not yeah. so much social stigma attached to it yeah. today is a is a lot more than what is that is that right do you see that to the younger yeah. generation yeah i i feel that it's it's become prime time conversation now and there is a certain sense of pride that even parents feel if they see their kids going into territory such as this which is which is great because more often than not when we think of log kya kahenge 60% of those log are maa baap 
बाकी लोग तो फिर बहुत बाद में आते हैं करेक्ट एंड एंड इफ सम हाउ माँ बाप आर इन दैट मोड वेर दे डोंट रिक्वायर एज मच कन्विंसिंग एंड इन स्टेट देर अप्रीशिएट एंड सपोर्टिव इट्स ऑल्स अ लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम सो थिंग्स एज शार्क टैंक एंड ऑल दो देव हेल्प्ड मेक कॉन्वर्सेशन प्राइम टाइम एंड करेक्ट एंड एंड डन दैट सो क्लियरली एंड ऑफकोर्स नॉट विथ स्टैंडिंग द सक्सेस दैट द स्टार्टअप वर्ल्ड हैज सीन इन द पास वेर वी हैव हैड पीपल मेक एक्चुअल मनी हैड सक्सेस कम आउट हैड इनफ एंड मोर इंस्पिरेशनल स्टोरीज of people who were not from the best brands and yet made it and so on uh, it just inspires a whole host of people do you enjoy like do you enjoy making content making education courses and how much of it is you like as a founder sometimes a lot of the heavy lifting is by the founder for maybe the first few months or years of the company and then the team comes in but in this case the company and you are very interlinked right it's you are the company you are the brand so it will always be you so is that a flywheel you struggle to think about like do you think that you can like you could live nearby and the comp- the company was a concern without you here that option doesn't exist it does if you start to look at content as something which stays permanent not something that comes in and goes so if you're creating content which is quote and quote news like and that's not the content that i create then you will always struggle with the problem because if there is no equivalent association of that news coming through then people will be like mujhe is insaan se wo news nahi sunni hai oh, because i am huh. used to hearing it from someone else, someone else right and uh, it's like a, a good case example is our time growing up ndtv pranay roy was the face like inseparable so it took a lot for say a barkha that to come in or for somebody to come yeah. in and it took ha huh, like rajdeep and, and it took like years and years and years of conditioning jahan wo 7 baje wali news se shuru karte the phir 8 baje aate the phir 8:30 baje aate the phir kisi din unki auqat hui ki jab pranay roy bimar tha to wo 9 baje wali news mein aaye tab bhi logon ne gaaliya di nahi hame pranay roy chahiye bla 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 but if you creating content which is time agnostic which just stays then the best part about that content is that people don't know you're not making content anymore because that content is there so it's like If I create a content around, hey, what's the concept of compounding, for example, mm. on YouTube? It doesn't matter if that video is four years old or four months old; it's still going to hold value. So, if I don't make any video on compounding in my life, that video will always be there, video to always be there unless I take it away. Correct. And that relevance will always remain because that's a law of nature and math. It's not something which was key. Twentieth or eighteenth century, only compounding came, but it didn't exist before. Correct. So. so that's the center of it uh, which is a, a very big decision that none of our content will ever be time sensitive it will be time agnostic yes. it will always stay. relevant that also reduces the stress on the system because we are never keeping up with anything like i <laughs> there is a brand that we work with they sent an email yesterday saying uh, hey uh, first week of september mein ye live ja sakta hai kya and like sorry schedule booked out hai 20th september is the earliest time kyunki mm-hmm. hamara schedule mahinon tak planned ho jata hai and that's because hamare ko koi time wo nahi karna hai ki are is time pe to ye concept chalega hi nahi hamara to concept bilkul perennial hai Correct. and it is going to be there so that is the one thing for the education course that's the education business though a big question that i do not yet have an answer to but i think we will get there is does does trust flow like seo does hmm. because i looked at seo and the concept of seo and i looked at how google does the entire page rank algorithm is beautiful insights from there that if there is a very high quality trusted site which is linking to yours then suddenly the linked site also enjoys the benefit Correct. of the trusted site and i think of myself as the one who could be potentially the trusted one the one with the high quality can i then pass on that trust to somebody else who is far better than me in a certain area but does not yet enjoy that trust or that public reputation that they ought to correct so can i be the sutradhar as against the key actor in there so supporting cast mein main kar sakta hu ki nahi mm. and that is a test that we are beginning to take the youtube course was a test around that The entire YouTube course was conducted by my YouTube team. It was not conducted by me. Oh, is it? So, of the total contact hours, I had less than ten percent. 
and they did a brilliant job they designed the course they delivered the course they built the community it was completely managed mai bas ek special appearance aake de deta tha and jo meri classes thi wo main leta tha but baki sab mein i was just another spectator like the entire audience and it worked out wonderfully well because people see the quality of content and it is indeed rich yes but they came <coughs> in because i spoke of it and that is a nice way of building that out so that's what we're trying to do and uh, time will tell whether it works or not and to what extent but the content piece i am not worried at all so I, you're saying the voice is not as important clearly at least at the educational level but on the content pieces which are more public like your youtube channels your instagram that's where your voice it is remains remains an important part yes. of it right and and that's why the one decision that we made is that we are never going to make that as the key monetization stream so i look at all of this as a business okay so break this up for me a little bit actually yeah sure so so the, all of this is is a business this is my livelihood this is what i do this is how we earn and this is how we make money for example last year we made 17 crores in revenue 70 17 17 and 8 crores in profit because kharcha hi nahi hai to so, did you redistribute all that 8 crores to everyone to everyone so so 10% of the profit goes back to the team and so the, the entire team earned 80 lakhs as the additional bonus uh, bonus over and above their stipend or their salary and it's a very small team we are nine people wow so and the rest of the money is you can in the reinvested yeah yeah we we just uh, we we're, we're building the net worth of the company because there will be significant investments that we will make in the future it's 100% owned by by me and my wife we never intend to raise any capital we never will and uh, 50% like, pad business it is it is crazy That's it is crazy, crazy. Yeah, and, and this is after literally expensing everything that we could like literally everything that we could sab ko jo humne kharida laptop phone office rent wala travel travel sab kuch sab kuch do everything in style and still you have an 850% exactly. pad to it's so, so dream hai yaar ye ha matlab ye ab ये ड्रीम है पहले ये ड्रीम नहीं था लाइक पहले ड्रीम था कि 700 करोड़ की कंपनी चाहे लॉस में हो क्या फर्क पड़ता है पर 700 करोड़ है बट आई हैव ओवर द इयर्स रियलाइज दैट देयर इज ब्यूटी इन बीइंग स्लो इन बीइंग डिलिब्रेट एंड आई नो कि ये 17 करोड़ का बिजनेस लाइक वी आर ऑलरेडी ऑन ट्रैक टू डू अपवर्ड्स ऑफ 30 करोड़ दिस ईयर एंड हम ऐसा कुछ एंड कंसिस्टेंट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन या 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 लाइक इन फैक्ट विल बी बेटर ऑफ बिकॉज़ खर्चे ना फिक्स्ड है वेरिएबल ही नहीं है वेरिएबल खर्चे नहीं है हमारे बिजनेस में हमारा सब कुछ फिक्स कॉस्ट है द ओनली वेरिएबल कॉस्ट इज डिजिटल मार्केटिंग फॉर एजुकेशन एवरीथिंग एल्स इज अ फिक्स कॉस्ट तो योर प्रॉफिट मार्जिन आर एक्चुअली बिकमिंग बेटर एट स्केल इट इट डजेंट वर्स इन सो दिस इज सो कूल आशीष मोहपत्रा आर फ्रेंड दर सेंग unsexy unglamorous businesses are the most profitable but clearly the most glamorous businesses are also equally profitable so ashish is been uh, ashish should have his point he should weigh in on this a little bit of, of business ke bare mein baat karenge yeah but uh, but the uh, the multiple the reason is because i have been an entrepreneur yeah if i hadn't been one all of this would not be possible so i would argue and i have zero data to make this statement so forgive me for making it i would think that on a per unit basis whatever that unit is subscribers followers view blah 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 blah, blah i make the most money in the country greater than most very big content creators kyunki unko nahi pata hai ki content ka karna kya hai unko nahi pata ki content kaise becha ja sakta hai unko nahi pata ki iske upar multiple income streams kaise banaye jati hain क्योंकि उन्होंने वो किया नहीं है कभी तो वो सीखेंगे ऑफ कोर्स एंड दिल गेट देयर सो नदर लेटर बट आज की डेट में बिकॉज आई एम एन ऑन्टरप्रनोर हु बिकेम अ कंटेंट क्रिएटर आई अंडरस्टैंड द नुआंसेस ऑफ बिजनेस फार बेटर एंड एंड दैट्स व्हाई आई एम मोनेटाइजिंग इन द वे दैट मोस्ट पीपल कैन लाइक मेरे स्केल पे आई हैव नो बिजनेस टू बी मेकिंग 17 सीआर अ ईयर बिकॉज़ पीपल हैव बीन एट इट फॉर इयर्स एंड नॉट गॉट इनटू दैट स्केल एंड स्टिल आर बिगर देन वेयर वी आर टुडे but give me a sense of how this like how this so, 17 or this 30 crores stacks up so basically the there are multiple revenue streams the one big decision that we made around content was we are not going to monetize that content in terms of charging anything from the end consumer or charging it through ads that run on say youtube so my channel will be one of the very few channels in the country where there are no ads running on the channel it's amazing also that you're saying per user or per subscriber you make the most money 
uh, again as i said zero data to prove it i am fairly sure like I'm, entrepreneurial conviction is 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 rooted in <laughs> is rooted in a fair bit of accuracy no it, it must be a pompous thing to say <laughs> but uh, nevertheless i think at the uh, there are there, as i said multiple revenue streams the one is we took a conscious call that ads no, nahi chalenge that could easily make about 10 lakhs a month for us oh really because we are at that scale so we're saying no to that kind of money but that's perfectly fine um what we do though is work with brands and some of these brands are long term associations and some of these brands will be occasional sponsorships or something like that long term ones will be of course brands that i personally use i know the founders very well i really like the product so udemy is there small case is there ind money is there these are brands that i have used for several years before i started working with them commercially leverage edu is there so on and seamlessly fit into your content also ha exactly right so there will be enough and more conversation around ki mai kis topic pe baat kar raha hu ye pro- product usme kaise seamlessly integrate hoga kya wo sara acche se hamara kaam hoga and there are a few sponsorships and so on so that's part of the money which is a which is a very healthy stream and i frankly did not have any idea it is this big shadow it is a massive massive market you call it influencer marketing you call it whatever it is but once you get to a certain size and scale and a certain persona money start flowing in so my manager is ruchi who's my wife she manages all my commercial conversations wow and we have never reached out to anybody everything is inbound we have a one price no regret price hum koi negotiation nahi karte hain because जीरो टाइम वेस्ट करना है उन सब चीजों पे तो हम लोगों को बोलते हैं ये हमारा प्राइस है वी अंडरस्टैंड इफ इट इज आउटसाइड ऑफ योर बजट बट दिस इज द ओनली प्राइस वी हैव सो आई हैव टू मोड्स आई विल डू समथिंग फॉर फ्री बिकॉज आई वांट टू डू इट और दिस इज द प्राइस एट व्हिच आई विल डू इट और कुछ नहीं है बीच में कहीं कोई डिस्काउंट नहीं होगा एंड दिस इज नाउ नोन इन ऑल एजेंसी सर्कल्स कि अंकुर वारिको के साथ यही प्राइस मिलता है वरना नहीं होगा इट्स ऑल्सो वेरी हाई इट इज वेरी हाई फॉर इट्स रेडिकुलसली हाई for a day if i have to fly somewhere for a talk let's say i go to some corporate and so on and so forth i charge 6 lakhs and this is just for an hour if i'm doing it in delhi i'll charge 5 lakhs and but there do you go and do a talk or do you like do you use the products or the service in your videos like no, no, what nothing so so like for example if i were to integrate a product on youtube i think it's 8 lakhs i'm not too sure okay so that like these are numbers which are fixed and every quarter ruchi will make that list and she will just share that in that way so that's one side which is the brand collaboration side the second side which i went into and i realized that wasn't part of that conversation is the entire corporate side of the business which Got is it. speaking gigs consulting even doing curated personalized courses for usually very large companies so i have designed courses for a team of top leadership 30 40 people around leadership managing teams time management blah 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 and there are a lot of occasions where people will be like ki hamare team ko motivate karne ke liye morale badhane ke liye aa jaiye we invite external speakers and so on and i of course charge for my time because why would i want to so that's the second revenue stream the third revenue stream is through affiliate income so links that brands give me where i would just put those links in and if people were to make a purchase they would of course get like so i'm sure i don't know if you guys have something equivalent but yeah, yeah, most d2c has <clears throat> massive affiliate programs that are running the one call that we made and very happy about that is 100% of the affiliate income that we make goes towards sponsoring the education of kids who can't afford it wow so and these are not through some ngo or anything like that log baqayda mujhe likhte hain ki you know hamare ye hain father is let's say a guard and दो साल से फीस नहीं गई है क्योंकि कोविड में उनकी नौकरी चली गई वगैरह 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 एंड देन वेट डू दैट इट्स रेडिकुलसली लाइक लास्ट ईयर वी मेड थर्टी सिक्स लैक्स इन एफिलियट इनकम which is not a trivial sum of money at all that went to 53 students who, and that's automatic like you don't there's no I, you don't, don't need any business do development or zero whatever. nothing i just put those links in my youtube or anywhere else they're there on that site and so on and what's the split like uh, like in terms of percentage across these three streams Brand. the the big one then is the courses as i the said the courses is a big one the courses are the big one 
the courses are run as a digital marketing engine so the the thesis is <coughs> my content is never ever going to sell anything that i make hmm. it's only going to talk about either other products or things that help people correct because of this hopefully over time i will build trust and that will be through several years of doing yeah. it consistently i will use this as a trust engine and not the sales engine i have about 7 million followers across social media i could very well sell them anything i want yeah. but i will not, not yeah. i will never sell them anything that i have made i will then complement that with a very strong effective robust digital marketing plan mm. through which i will reach out to people who do not know of my existence at all so to give you numbers every month about 28 million people organically consume my content and about 43 million people are reached through my ads so there are way more people who are reached through my ads than my content reaches to jab wo mera ad dekhte hain bolte hain ye kaun hai insaan and wo skip kar dete hain understandably so hum bhi yahi karte hain fir wo dusri baar ad aata hai bolte hain kaun hai ye insaan fir wo fir se skip karte hain fir teesri baar aata hai like kaun hai ye kambakt insaan fir se skip karte hain fir chauthi panchvi baar irritate hoke at some point of time they will google me up like kaun hai ankur wale ko and when they google me up they will hopefully see years and years of good quality content yeah. that they find value in and that is why they will be tempted if at all to buy the course which is by the way a journey that we have tracked and it works wonderfully well uh so that is the course side but then that has an expense of digital marketing yeah so if i were to give you a split about 40% of the revenue is courses wow about 25% is brand collaborations about 15% are speaking gigs corporate events and so on and then there is this peripheral of about Affiliate 5 to 10% which is the rest of the income so okay. it's a nice happy spread there is no over indexing on just one part of it um and it it continues to that's unbelievable but tell me about uh, i know that you know you have to as we reach the la- la- you know the it's this is a mesmerizing conversation to be very honest like Thank you. um i can see why you have a flair for public speaking you are very articulate and also very thoughtful about um about the way you put messages together uh, one of the messages has been around financial independence for for youngsters i wanted to kind of know what it was for you was there a number you had in mind to get to you clearly are probably making a, like a ton of money right now comp- you have been making a lot of money for years but that was always revenue this seems to be capital yeah right yeah. this is now equity capital this is equity which is very very different in uh, and like liquid equity capital which is i think worth its weight in gold yes but did you always have a number when you were at groupon or nearby or now keep us no I, i i i actually always had a number and and i'm 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 baffled by the fact that people don't have a number what's your number the number is 21 crores that's very specific that's very it's 21.76 crores to be specific 3 million dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah well depending on the exchange rate <laughs> that number basically pays for everything that i want to do in life and i don't need any amount beyond that like if it first comes then i'll have to figure out what i have to do with that but ye bachcho ki education hamare sare living expenses inflation adjusted and a big expense of that is travel to mars <laughs> which i have assumed will be about 10 crore so a large part of this is just travel you want to travel to mars oh 100% i'm traveling to mars for sure that's the whole space scientist ha ha pakka 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 but why 21.76 like uh, is this liquid uh like in equity plus debt plus houses is that what it is if i had 21.76 cr right now mm. and if i were to invest that in a ratio of safe and high growth assets i would basically pay for my entire life and not need any single money and you won't touch the principal i won't touch no no i will have to touch the principal okay. so the principal will keep going down okay. as i keep getting older and the investment amount keeps getting lower and lower correct so at the age of 103 to mai 103 saal tak pata nahi model ban gaya i am an excel freak i love <laughs> playing with excel to so, 103 103 saal pe mere paas zero paise honge to you will kind of eat into it dheere 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 karke wo but today's value 21.76 crores today the time value of that is 21.76 wow and you have you surpassed it you're near it at it no i'm i'm quite far from it but i uh, But I will clearly get there. Keep on going. Ha, boy. It it doesn't matter whether I get there or not. <laughs> the reason why I'm baffled, people don't have the number, is because if you don't know what you're chasing, you will continuously keep chasing, hmm. and that is where most people get trapped. They don't know that in life, whatever they want to do, they need to spend how much money. 
इट डजन मीन जैसे मैं लोगों से पूछता हूँ हाउ मच मनी डू यू नीड इन लाइफ तो कुछ लोग होते हैं जो बहुत ही रिडिकुलसली लो आंसर देते हैं दस बीस लाख में हो जाएगा बिकॉज दे आर सो फोकस्ड ऑन देर इमीजिएट गोल की ना ये लोन चुका दें ये गाड़ी खरीद लें हो जाएगा एंड देन देर इज अदर एक्सट्रीम इज लाइक पांच सौ करोड़ बोले तुम्हें पता भी है पांच सौ करोड़ खर्च कैसे करते हैं आई डोंट नो हाउ टू स्पेंड फाइन आई रियली डोंट नो एंड आई एम नॉट फिक्सेटेड ऑन जनरेशनल वेल्थ वी हैव डिसाइडेड दैट आर किड्स विल नॉट गेट एनी थिंग वी विल स्पॉन्सर देर एजुकेशन एंड आफ्टर दैट हमारा काम खत्म एंड वी जस्ट होपिंग दैट दिस स्मार्ट इनफ टू फिगर दिस शेड आउट नहीं होगा तो देख लेंगे but they are not getting any money which basically means that all the money that we will make will be donated in some form of the other yeah and uh, and and that's why hame nahi chahiye 500 crore kyunki us 500 crore ko kahan hum donate karenge hame nahi pata hoga 21.76 but it's very interesting you say that because for example my number is 50 crores okay and the reason for 50 crores is i feel that uh Uh, the monthly interest I should make of the safest investment of that principal should be four to five times my current expenses maximized, right? Sure. So, if I go ten fifteen lakh a month, ke chahiye, to fifty crore agar honge, to H D F C me rakhunga, to bhi mil jayenge mere ko net of tax, right? Uh, but my maths involves me never touching the fifty crores. Ah, uh, got it. Yes. But your maths involves yeah, yeah. half yeah. of it going to Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that a that's 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 a very unique way of uh, it's yeah. a risk it's a risky way of thinking of business okay. because it doesn't affect you that that number will keep going. No, up. no, it doesn't because you've seen so so many hard times that uh, nothing can shake you. Like the just the ridiculous fact that we are never going to die of hunger, poverty is polio. हाँ लाइक इट्स इट्स जस्ट लाइफ सॉर्टेड है यार जिंदगी में कभी भी भूख तंगी नंगेपन इन सब चीजों से नहीं मरेंगे आप तो वी आर ऑलरेडी सो 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 प्रिवलेज और दिमाग भी भगवान ने दिया हुआ है तो कुछ ना कुछ करके इट्स अमेजिंग आई यूर राइट लाइक आई डोंट थिंक लाइक इफ यू वोट टू रिप्लेस बोथ ऑफ अस बाय आर पेरेंट्स लाइक योर डैड एंड माई डैड फॉर एग्जाम्पल एट द सेम एज लेट से दे वुड एवर बी एबल टू हैव द कॉन्वर्जेशन की हाउ मच मनी डू नीड This is a very real conversation, yeah. Yeah. and I don't know Vidur ke generation me what it will actually what become. Will be actually, yeah. But the country yeah, is just is booming, and it's amazing yeah, to just see it happen. You just see like it'll be a very very different world. It'll be a very different world. Good or bad, once not so sure. At least I'm not, but it'll be a very different world. And I and I have a stronger suspicion it will be for the better than for the worse. For the world, or you are you mean for the country specifically? No, I I think collectively for the world and also for the country, I I have this. Ruchi and I have this constant debate in our in our family where we we lead what I would call a very sustainable way of living. We uh, we we're both vegetarians. We compost our entire food waste. We eat organic. We have a farm where we produce our own. In Kashmir, uh, like, in Delhi. No, here, here, in Delhi. Pe, like she used to work for an organic farm. Okay. So that's where she she learned that and I think. So our all the vegetables come from the farm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Pesticide free and all that. Whatever, whatever, whatever. We don't order anything outside. People say, "What do you order?" We don't order anything outside. 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 because nothing happens at an individual level yeah and it just so happens i was in a conversation yesterday with one of my favorite writers of all time set gordon ha huh. and he is you were in a conversation with set gordon yeah i was wow. in a conversation with set gordon <laughs> and uh, he's just released his latest book called the carbon almanac ha huh. and it's uh, it's it's basically around climate change and he stresses upon the same point he said that as a marketer i feel ashamed of the fact that the most successful marketing campaign in the last century has been british petroleum convincing the world that individual efforts during climate change are far more important because they're not and there is enough data to prove that until there is a systemic change in the way that we look at at the world it's not going to happen so the larger point being i am a firm believer in technology i'm a firm believer in human capability i'm a firm believer in the potential of mankind to keep progressing and to find out solutions to problems that we don't yet have solutions to and uh, i do not think that our resources are limited because the one resource that we have is mind, which yeah. is the human mind is unlimited so will we face a water calamity 
Yes, perhaps in our generation, but after 100 years, no. I'm certain we will have a way of producing and navigating through that problem in a way that we don't understand as yet. Will we run out of coal? 100%. But will the world die of that? No, I'm 100% convinced we will find energy sources that will fulfill our needs and so on and so forth. And I believe that uh, the one thing that will help India is just our way of processing and putting things that we know to work. We fancily call it Jugaad, but I think Jugaad will manifest itself into a more formal way of implementing and seeing itself visible. And I think uh, in the next 40 years, the world will come to know of Jugaad as the way of making things happen. Have you read this book called Let There Be Water? No. It's, it's, it's about Israel and how they solved the water problem. Is it? Yeah, it's amazing. Brilliant. So Ashish Goel, the founder of Urban Ladder, yeah. uh, he's a big Hindu. So he told uh, us to have a look. One final, Ankur, one, um, uh, I'm hoping that people who listen to the barbershop are, will go on to think that starting up their own business or being entrepreneurial in their own life, it may not be VC funded or becoming a great content um, uh, champion or what it may not be it could be something at a smaller scale to start with and so on but I'm hoping that they are nudged by these conversations in that direction but any very tangible or heartfelt advice from you to someone who's listening who might want to go on to do this in the immediate future I, I believe <clears throat> entrepreneurship is not a profession it's actually a state of mind and by that measure you can very well be in a job and act like an entrepreneur, which means the true definition of an entrepreneur is there is disproportionate value you can create from the resources that you have. Context agnostic. Context agnostic. You could very well pick up a shaving product, a grooming product, and convert it into something which is far, far, far bigger than the actual value of the product. Yeah which is what you guys have done remarkably so. In the same breath, you could very well pick up a PowerPoint presentation that you have to make and make it far, far, far more valuable than the actual presentation that you were supposed to make. Thus, adding tangible economic value to your output. If you do that, you're an entrepreneur. If you continue to deliver the exact same expected value of the resource that you've been given, you're an employee. By that measure, there are hundreds of entrepreneurs I know who are actually employees and there are hundreds of employees I know who are actually entrepreneurs. So the only thing that I would say is while it looks very attractive, very sexy, very glamorous to start your own business and I hope and pray that you go on to do that, please don't think of yourself as a failure or live in FOMO if you are unable to start a business because while at work, if you were to constantly look at what is the value of the resource that you are working on and how can you add or create disproportionate value to that, you will ultimately end up creating wealth, not just for yourself, but for the company, for the country, for the world. And that is you being an entrepreneur. That's amazing. So you're, you're basically distinguishing and saying it's more important to be entrepreneurial yes. than to be an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Because that en encompasses a far wider um impact a universe then you're right because people have to make a huge amount of change take a la la large amount of risk and then if they're not able to do it then they feel that they don't have the option and they will never ever feel like wanting to be entrepreneurial ever again yes. which will be a tragedy because they may be brilliant entrepreneurial minds and yet didn't succeed in the entrepreneurship journey and everyone loses great. them and everyone loses them you actually lost a mind Amazing. On that note, Ankur, thank you so much for your time and it's been a pleasure to host you on, on The Barbershop. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughtful questions. I had a wonderful time engaging and thanks for doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you.